you. I'm so glad to be back. It's so nice to see everyone. And thank you for taking an hour out of what might be a really beautiful day. It just depends on where you're joining us from. So um, I'm so glad that you're here. And what a wonderful gift to give yourself that hour of um, time to really focus in on spring cleaning, decluttering, decluttering the calendar and our to-do list. So as we begin our time together, I'll just invite you to have a pen and paper handy because we are gonna have an opportunity to do just a little um, written exercise. And so I'll just give you a moment in case you have to go and grab a pen and paper. Um, and then we will begin our time together with just a little written exercise. So if you have your pen and paper handy, we're gonna begin. And I'm gonna set a timer. So this is just a little timed exercise. The great news is you cannot do it wrong. So if you um, are wondering, wait, what are we gonna do? I didn't know I had to do anything. Um, don't worry, just uh, sit back and follow along. We're gonna take um, one and a half minutes right now. So I'm setting a timer and we're gonna take um, just one and a half minutes. And this is gonna be your opportunity to get all of that mental clutter that might be up here and making you feel a little um, chaotic or overwhelmed or frazzled, uh, forgetting things. And we're just gonna take a moment. And if you have your pen and your paper ready, we're just going to write for the next 90 seconds. And what I'm gonna invite you to write is really a list of those tasks and to-dos and follow-ups that have been on your mind. It's those things that roll around in your mind as you're trying to fall asleep. It's the things that you think of first thing in the morning and they're up here, but they're not quite on a pen and paper on a note or they're on little scraps of paper that we've misplaced. So I'm gonna invite you to just take a moment with me now and we are gonna download all of those thoughts onto a single sheet of paper. You can't do this wrong, just write. You don't have to group anything. You don't have to make anything special. We're just going to write. So if you'd like to join me now, we have a minute and a half on our timer and we're gonna begin our decluttering our mind, downloading those thoughts and let's start writing now. And our timer's ticking and you're writing. I won't say much so you can really focus. And these are all your to-dos, follow-ups, spring cleaning, decluttering, swapping out seasonal clothing, anything that comes to mind. One minute left. And you can just keep writing, final 30 seconds. And last few thoughts. As our timer ticks down, one or two more things. And it's your final 12 seconds. And our timer's going to ring right now. And there's our time. So thank you for joining me for that. If you've ever um, done a little download like that, um, this may seem a little familiar. And if you've never done anything like this, uh, for me, I find it to be a really great technique to just clear my mind. So if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, not sure what to do, a little frazzled, can't fall asleep, um, have difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, this can be a great technique. Also having difficulty focusing because sometimes there's just a lot of thoughts and when we capture them on paper, it almost starts to become our little roadmap. So that's just sort of that little download exercise. It was 90 seconds. So this is something that you can do on a daily, weekly or monthly basis to capture all those thoughts floating around. So for example, for me on my list is my car needs to go through inspection 
And it's something that I know I need to do, but it's not on my calendar yet. And I don't want to forget. I need to follow up um, with a company that keeps sending me a bill, but the bill was paid. And every time I call, they say, okay, you have a zero balance, but it's never a zero balance because every month they send another bill. So those are things that um, come up on the to-do list, but you may have also found things like decluttering, cleaning, emails to send, and things to do. So once you sort of have this download, I'll invite you to now look over that list. And let's see if we can group some things into some common categories. For example, you may find a few phone calls that need to be done. Uh, so if you need to make phone calls, we'll list those there. If you need to run errands, that would be another category. So you don't necessarily need to rewrite the list, although you could. Um, you could number them together or sort of circle them to put them all sort of in one group. And the idea is what we're doing is batching our tasks. So it allows us to sort of group similar items together, people to email, people to call, things to follow up on, things to buy, things to declutter, things to clean. And you might just naturally see that there are some very broad categories where a few of these tasks sort of fit under. And once we've done that, what's going to probably um, come to you next is the thought of, okay, well, now that I have these categories, call, email, shop, clean, declutter, now we can start to put those into the calendar. So you may have your calendar nearby, your calendar maybe, you may, are anyone else doing a calendar on their phone? So if your calendar's on your phone, or if you have your paper calendar nearby, you can actually start to pencil in some of these grouped tasks. So instead of saying, email and then write all the different emails you need to do, you could just say email, but then refer to this sort of main list where all of your tasks are batched. And you could do this sort of for the week. Days go by so quickly. It's already Tuesday. Before you know it, it'll be Wednesday. I used to do my schedule on a daily to-do list, but honestly, now I just do a week at a time. So if you tend to start your week, like if you wanted to do this Sunday night, Monday morning, Friday evening, Saturday afternoon, whatever, kind of you get in a routine of looking at the next week and planning out. And I'm gonna schedule my emails here and my phone calls here. And maybe there's laundry, spring cleaning, decluttering. And you can start to pencil in those tasks. If you're not quite sure what to do first, a great way of looking at this list that you just wrote is to look over the list and notice anything that is time sensitive. For example, if you haven't gathered your tax documents and made your um, tax return appointment or made a date for yourself to do your tax returns, that one is time sensitive and that one might be kind of going, hey, over here, you've got to work on me first because there's a time limit here. So there's kind of a deadline there. So that's the one that might naturally fall to the top of the list. And that would be the one we would focus on first. If all the tasks seemed pretty equal and there was no one task that was particularly time sensitive, then I'd invite you to think about the task that is the easiest to do, the easiest one to do. And that way, um, it's probably something you can tackle in a lot less time than you're anticipating. And when you do it, then it kind of builds that momentum of like, oh, well, now that I did this, let me go on to the next task. So doing the easiest one first, if no one is particularly time sensitive. So those are some great um, techniques for figuring out how to prioritize the list. An alternative would be if you looked over the list and just picked the one that's most annoying. And sometimes just solving the one that's most annoying um, will just give you that peace of mind of, okay, that's at least off the list and I can continue on. So if there's something that's in your way every day that you need to declutter, um, recently I cleaned out a hall closet. I had leftovers after I cleaned out the hall closet. So there were a few things that didn't quite get back into the closet. I'm not sure what to do with them. So they're in a box in the middle of the hallway. And every time I walk down the hallway, I'm like, I've got to tackle this. And I'm at risk of tripping over it or stubbing my toe. I've got a vacuum around it. And it's like all the time I'm spending avoiding it, I could have just done it already. So sometimes we spend more time avoiding something than if we just do it. So thinking about the task that's annoying us most if there's not a time sensitive task. So I'll share with you how I do my to-do list. Then I'm gonna add 12 possible tasks to your list. So I've identified the top 12 tasks that when it comes to spring cleaning, you might want to add to your list. It's optional, 
but I wanted to offer them to you to see if you wanted to add them to your list. I'll give you a bunch of resources along the way. So if you have items to declutter or sell or share, we'll be talking about that. And then hopefully by the time we log off just about 7.30, you'll have a great plan, that roadmap for how to get things done in a way that feels like it's less stressful because they're planned out. Nothing really becomes an emergency at the last minute. And of course, we'll talk about how to stay motivated along the way, especially if some of these tasks are just not our favorite. And we're like, mm, I know I need to do it, but I'm not really looking forward to it. So let's talk about the to-do list. Then we'll get into the 12 tasks. Some of those you may want to add to your to-do list. So for me, again, I shared with you that I kind of look at the week as a whole, because again, days go by so quickly. So you could end up with a four page to-do list and there's no way you're getting four pages of to-dos done in a day. So in fact, that's more of your main to-do list. And I'll invite you to pull from that list um, on a daily basis. So my to-do list is actually written out, um, but if you do um, digital, this will work beautifully for you as well. And I break my day up into three parts, morning, afternoon, and evening. So I have three little windows and each of those windows for each day, I plug in one task that's outside of the everyday things, everyday things like cooking and um, you know brushing my teeth and things like that. So above and beyond that, I'm adding three tasks to my day. So Peggy says she's got her calendar on the phone. So this can work beautifully if you do tasks or if you're doing a paper calendar. But my idea of doing morning, afternoon, and evening spreads out the tasks. And it also gives you time to reset. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes I have great plans for my day. And then all of a sudden something happens. It's unexpected. It takes me in another direction. Something takes longer than I thought. Um, there's just, sometimes you just lose a little momentum or a little steam. So it allows you to kind of say, you know what? The afternoon's a whole nother section of the day. I can start again and get my task done or the evening, a brand new section of the day. So for me, that works. You may find you wanna break up your day a little differently, but I'm adding three tasks above and beyond my everyday routine. Now, this may not sound like a lot. And if you're like, but I've got a whole list of things to do doing three a day, this list is gonna last forever. But here's the thing. If we plan too much and we don't get it done, it really starts to put a little ding in our ability to feel like we can do this. But when you do three things and you end up maybe even doing more some days, you're like, wow, I've got this accomplished. We feel so successful. There's only 24 hours in the day. Some of that you need to sleep, right? So there's a lot of um, you know, things that need your attention during the day. So I'm just inviting you to think of three things. So for example, calling that company, because remember, they keep sending me a bill. That would be one task. And I would probably put that in the morning. That would give them the data response to me if I didn't catch anyone that I needed to talk to. So that would be a great one. My car inspection, that would be one. And we're going to plug that in probably the afternoon. So maybe right after lunch or during lunch, um, you know, right there. And then an evening task as well. So this may be a different way of thinking about your to-do list, but I would invite you to try it. You can always, you know, um, tweak it and change it to see, um, you know, if it doesn't quite work, you can always adjust. But I think it's a great starting point because a lot of us, myself included, I was often working off of a two-page to-do list. And the interesting thing is that just as soon as you cross one thing off the to-do list, there's one or two more tasks waiting to come on, right? Because there's always something to do. So if you're waiting until your to-do list is completely crossed off, um, I think that maybe we're waiting for a time that's not going to come. Life is filled with to-dos. So don't set yourself up for failure by waiting to cross everything off of that main to-do list. Instead, focus on the three things that you can cross off from the day, and that's where you see a finished to-do list. So that's why we're going to break it down into small bits. I think you already know how much I love to do that, which is why we set our timer in a small amount of time to tackle a task. And we're gonna have an opportunity to do that together in just a little while. But before we do, we'll go back to, we started our time together by taking 90 seconds and just capturing our thoughts on paper so that we can see them. And this starts the plan of, these are the things that I want to do and these are the things I want to get accomplished. From that list, I'm gonna to add to it maybe a few things. So I'm gonna run through a list of 12 items that you may or may not wanna to add to your list. 
There's also three things you might wanna change. And the first one is batteries. We just changed our clocks. Well, I guess we could start there. If you didn't get a chance to change all your clocks, we can add that to the list. But it is recommended that when you change the clocks, you change the battery in your smoke detector, your fire alarm, your CO2 detector, um, carbon monoxide. So if you haven't done that, let's not only add that to the list, but maybe put it on the top of the list. That is a very important one to do. And if you don't have the batteries, let's add them to your shopping list immediately. Also for changing not only the batteries in the clocks, but also the filters. So if there's any filter in your home that you know needs to be changed, it's spring, it's a great time to just refresh those filters, air conditioner, water filter, furnace filter, all the filters in your life. And if you're changing filters, may I invite you to write down the model number once you figure it out once, if you write it down, you won't have to try to figure it out again next season. So make a note of those model numbers, whether it's a note on your phone or you email yourself those model numbers or you move forward in your calendar and write um, on the calendar, order such and such a filter, um, you know, and put that maybe at the August or September on your calendar so that you'll remember to do it. So we're changing the clocks, we're changing the batteries, we're changing the filters. And could I invite you to look under the sinks? And I know this is probably gonna involve decluttering under the sinks, but how perfect spring cleaning and decluttering. I cannot tell you the number of clients that I've worked with through the years, the stories I've heard and a story from myself personally that there's plumbing and piping under a sink. And if that space is filled with things and you haven't looked at it lately, you might be quite surprised to find out that there's a little drip happening under a sink. And so that's something to be found sooner rather than later, which is why um, decluttering under the kitchen sink can be a great priority. So Christine said, definitely change those batteries. Had a fun 3 a.m. wake up call from the CO2 detector the other night. Sometimes they'll do that beep, that chirp to let you know, hey, change the batteries. So Christine's a big uh, fan of, of doing that. So for these little household projects, changing filters, changing batteries, and all those other little tasks and cleaning tasks, it would be maybe really helpful to just create a little, a little caddy, a little cleaning or a little, a little project caddy, if you will. So you have your dust cloth, you have your um, screwdriver that opens the different things, you have your batteries ready to go, and um, maybe even a step stool, because so many of these things you probably can't reach. So very carefully on a step stool, no one should be on like a rolling chair or anything like that. So always we want to do these things safely. But if you had all of your project um, pieces and parts ready to go, that's one step towards getting it done. So if you do tend to procrastinate about it, you're almost getting ready. And then once everything's ready to go and you've got your batteries like Christine did to make that change, now all we have to do is follow through and do it. So if you collect everything once versus doing one project, putting everything away, get everything out, do another project, put everything away, right? So a lot of wasted time back and forth. So just doing this once, it could be a project hour, a project afternoon, a project weekend where all these things are done. And remember, if you can't do them all, I'd invite you to keep a running list of tasks that you need help with. So when someone stops by or family, neighbors, and they're like, oh, do you need help with anything? And you're like, oh, I know I need help. What was it I was going to ask you? Then they leave and you're like, that's right. I was going to ask them to bring that down from the attic or put that on the top shelf. So keep a running list of things that you'd like assistance with. Peg said, my alarm woke us up at 2 a.m. and it drove the dog crazy. Well, I mean, it's good that we know that they're working. So that's the positive thing. But yes, the middle of the night wake up. Uh, especially if you get startled awake is not pleasant. And of course, uh, my dog Holly would also react the same way. So we just need calm and that is not calm. So um, anytime we can change the batteries, I'm a big fan. So we talked about um, adding a few things like changes. Let's talk about those 12 tasks. And remember, again, we're breaking them up and putting them on the calendar as if they are appointments with ourselves to get things done. Then we'll talk about how we get things done, especially if we're not feeling particularly motivated. Uh, I'll be sharing resources with you along the way. And of course, answering any questions that I can, either in the chat throughout or by a more of a formal Q&A where you could unmute your microphone at the end of the program. So let's get started with those 12 tasks that 
you might be overlooking or you forgot you wanted to do, or it hadn't really even occurred to you. So number one, of course, is the dusting. And we're probably doing some dusting all the time, but this is maybe a little more thorough of a dust, right? So if you have like throw pillows and things like that, and they are um, dryer safe, you could just pop them in the dryer, no heat on like an air dry, a couple of tumbles in the dryer and those throw pills and things will basically dust themselves. So if that's an option, we can always use the air dry feature to do some of our dusting. And then there's all the other dusting. So getting out your duster and we're looking at that door frame, that little tiny lip around the door frame can collect quite a bit of dust over the season. And it may be a spot that we tend to overlook. So we're looking at that door frame. Also all those little crevices, if you have furniture that has scroll work and patterns and things, this is a little maybe um, deeper process in the dusting. And if you're trying to dust a lampshade, a lint roller might be super simple. So um, instead of trying to figure out how to dust the lampshade without damaging it, just gently running a lint roller over it could um, really help to, uh, to get all that dust and debris off of a lampshade. So number one, if it hasn't been on your list that we just did now and you'd like to add it, dusting comes to mind and you can jot down a couple of those spaces. And again, once you get all your supplies out for dusting, you can just kind of do the dusting. And whether that means you do the dusting while you're listening to your favorite music or playing a podcast or kind of watching a show in the background, um, something fun, right, to kind of make it happen. So dusting is number one, but this is that deeper level of dusting. And don't forget about compressed air. So you may know it's that um, can, it's, um, and it, it's like a compressed air, and it usually has that little straw, kind of like you'd see in a WD-40. And that spritz of compressed air, often meant to take debris off of a keyboard. Um, it can be great when it comes to um, delicate figurines and things that you just need to kind of blow the dust off of. So I'll share that little uh, insider tip with you as well. So that is number one, and we're talking dusting, which is um, something we know we need to do, so we'll get it on the list. And then let's think about the fans, the fans. So if you have ceiling fans, again, over the winter, a lot of dust and debris can really settle on the top of that fan blade. So you may have seen this in some of the articles, uh, maybe it's even an article that I've written, but the idea of dusting the fan blade without having all that dust drop um, onto everything below the fan blade is to take an old pillowcase, an old pillowcase. So if you have an old pillowcase, then we're just gonna kind of take that pillowcase, right? And you've got that you know, open side there. We're just gonna roll that pillowcase back. I'm gonna roll the pillowcase back. So the um, inside's coming out and we're just rolling the pillowcase so we get to that interior of the pillowcase. Then if you kind of imagine my phone as the fan blade, we're just gonna slide that pillowcase over the fan blade. Now we can sort of close it and slide it back. And as we do that, hopefully the goal is that most of the dust and debris will um, be trapped inside. And then you can launder your pillowcase. So of course, very carefully on a step stool, if that's something you do. And if this is nothing that you do and you're going to um, treat yourself and have your cleaning you know, delegated or hired out, then um, you know, they've got it covered. But fan blades is another one often overlooked, but we know we need to do it. So Peg said, I listen to BBC radio dramas on CDs while I clean. I love this. Agatha Christie, Sherlock Holmes. So um, she's really got her lineup of fun programming. And again, if you want to listen to the show, then you have to do the project, right? Because if that's the only time you let yourself listen to the show, then to get to the next part of the show and figure out the who done it on the Orient Express, um, and you've got to do the cleaning. So how wonderful, I love that. Um, let's not forget when it comes to our dryer of the utmost important is that vent. So the lint, the lint trap, that vent, um, if you haven't cleaned it recently, um, now would be a great time. This one's kind of like the batteries in the alarm clock, so very important. So that uh, lint that accumulates either in the filter or in the trap of the um, dryer, 
that we all know it's a fire hazard. And it's again, one of those things that we're like, I know I should do it. And then we do another load of laundry. And it's like, I know I should do it. So please do it. Um, so very important. And so they make tools that can attach to your vacuum or, or maybe you know, you know how to do it, but absolutely that dryer vent is so, so important. So wonderful. All right, so we, um, we, ta we tackled dusting, uh, which we might air dry some things to just dust them um, that way. We've got our ceiling fans and then we have our dryer vent. Uh, we're gonna be moving on to number four. Before we do, Karen said, so I dust and as I'm dusting, the dust tends to fall right back down on the furniture. So I keep a heavy duty Swiffer um, for dusting. How do I keep it from coming back? Oh, what a great question, Karen. So there's always that debate of like, do I dust first? Do I vacuum first? No one really seems to know which way to go. Um, so the older style vacuums um, did tend to kick up a lot of dust. So in that case, it was recommended to actually vacuum first and then dust. The new vacuums on the market are so closed and contained and have all the fancy filters that actually the reverse is true now. So we do recommend that you dust first followed by the vacuuming. And the hope is that in the vacuuming, you're collecting the dust that fell on the floor. But like Karen said, the dust can also just go every which way. So number one to think about is, although, um, you know, sort of that the, the Swiffer and other products out there can be great, I would just see if maybe it's not trapping the dust so much as it's moving the dust around. And so sometimes some of those products are maybe not the best. It might depend on what you're dusting and how much dust there is. And not that that's a comment on anyone's particular housekeeping. It's just if you leave the windows open more or you live near a more well-traveled road or who knows, we can all just have you know varying levels of dust that comes in. So my guess would be maybe Karen to move to more of a, um, uh, more of a microfiber cloth uh, that does tend to really trap the dust. And then of course, we always want to be sure we're shaking it up in between because just because it collects, it doesn't mean it can you know, hold a lot. So we need to either replace or shake out in between. It's such a great question and so frustrating because you think you're cleaning and then you're like, but I almost feel like I'm making a bigger mess. The other thing um, for that, Karen, and I'm not here to um, you know, spend anyone's money, but I'll just say that I recently invested myself in an air purifier. Um, mine was under $100. I know some of them are very expensive, but after a tremendous amount of research, I went with one that was under $100. And I was like, let me just see if this is gonna make a difference. And for me personally, in my home, it has made a tremendous difference. I always thought, oh, maybe they're inflating the claims about this, but I plug it in in the kitchen and I have a black stove top that usually, you know, I could write my name by the end of the day, no matter how clean, you know, it doesn't matter. The stuff falls, plus my dog's hair is in the air and all of that's gone. Um, so I found that I have less cleaning to do with an air purifier. So I only say that, again, I'm not here to get you to shop for a bunch of stuff, but I just wanted to mention it. And maybe someone else has had this experience um, with, with that as well. Um, so Amy said, does the vacuum attachment you mentioned take the lint out of the dryer ductwork? Yes, Amy. So some of them are meant to do that. Some do it better than others. There are some like on an infomercial that I don't think are necessarily the best, but there are some great ones from um, Bed Bath & Beyond or from Amazon that have great reviews and it does, it attaches to the vacuum and then it's a long thin stick that can go through the dryer ductwork. If you're um, not sure or you're concerned, there are also you know professional companies that can come out, but it would just be um, something to take note of. And if you know where your dryer is venting to, if you dry something in a particular color, look at the vent and then you can see, like if it's a green sweatshirt and green lint's coming out, then you, you know, have a better sense of how clear that duct worth might be. But always check, it's, it's so, so very important. So thank you for clarifying. And Karen said, I have an air purifier. Um, I've got like kind of going on the, the high caliper, live in an apartment with hardwood floors. Um, yeah, so we just try to, Heidi loves the air purifier. Yeah, it's um, again, everyone has a different opinion, but I thought it was going to be one of those things that like, oh, I won't know the difference and boy, do I know the difference. So there you go. Thanks for that uh, input, Heidi. So we talked about fans. That was number um, three and of uh, well, bent and bands. And now number four is those high touch surfaces. So as we're going through these 12 I items, um, you may not need to tackle them or you may. And if you do, let's get them on your to-do list and schedule them on your calendar. And we're talking 
high touch surfaces. So in our you know, weekly cleaning routine, are you cleaning the remote control? Are you wiping down your phone? Um, handles, switches, drawer pulls, salt and pepper shakers, right? So these are the kinds of things that we reach for every day. We don't necessarily think that much about it, um, but then you're like, huh, maybe I should wipe that down. So this would be a great time to kind of just add these to your, um, you could even start like a little um, spring cleaning checklist that you'll be able to refer back to and use again next year. And that's going to include our extra dusting, our dryer vent, our fans, and our high touch surfaces. So just notice like on a day what you're reaching for. And if you had, um, you know, sanitizing wipes or your cleaner ready to go, you could just catch everything you touch and then you feel like, okay, I, you know, spruced it up. So high touch surfaces that includes salt and pepper shakers, if you use them. And let's talk number five. This is our refrigerator. Spring is such a perfect time to just sort of refresh um, that refrigerator space where you might find, you know, wilted herbs way in the back, cheese that's turning to another color, um, leftovers that have been left over for a little too long. And even if the food is fresh and everything's in date and all your marinades are good, there still may be a little, you know, splotch or splatter or drip that would be great to just wipe down. It doesn't have to be the big fridge makeover where you take out all the shelves and wipe everything down. It could be, but the idea of just wiping a little bit and you're like, wow, when I open the fridge, it even looks bigger in here. Everything's kind of shiny and fresh. So the fridge comes to mind. That's number five on our list. And again, this is a list you can use, um, you know, fall cleaning and then next year for spring as well. Um, oh, wonderful. So Peg has a great little tip. She said with Costco, um, every so often, like their really high caliper um, filtrate filters go on sale. So she keeps the filter size in her phone under notes for the Costco run. And then if she's in there and they're, oh, it's on sale, which one do I need? And then there it is. Or the reverse of I'm in the store, things are on sale. What do I usually get? And uh, I think that's a wonderful thing to do with your phone, keeping those running notes. And in fact, you could keep your spring cleaning checklist um, right on your phone as well. So love that, Peg. Less paper is always great, so fantastic. Um, let's talk pantry next. That's number six on our list. We're just going to check that things are in date. So, um, and just tidy up. You may find things to donate to the food bank if you know you're not gonna use them by their expiration date, but let's look at the spices. Let's look at the canned goods, the marinade that you thought you bought just six months ago, but it's more like six years ago and you just don't know where the time has gone or you don't like it. It's not your favorite flavor. I don't know, but if you're not gonna use it, if it's in date, we can donate it. If it's past date, unfortunately, we're going to have to discard it. If you're ever not sure, um, Still Tasty can be a great resource. Still, S-T-I-L-L, -L, Tasty, T-A-S-T-Y, Still Tasty. It's a search bar, type in what you have, um, extra mashed potatoes, frozen pot roast. I don't know what you've got, but um, it'll tell you, you know, how long it's been stored if you can still consume it safely. So Still Tasty can be a great resource for it when it comes to the pantry. And one of the things that I recently did in my pantry that I would have to tell you about is I made a grab and go section. So I realized the pantry was mostly getting disorganized when people, including myself, would reach in to get like a snack and then things wouldn't get clipped back or everything would get tipped over. So I have one little basket, it has no lid, so it's just a reach in basket. And it just has the single serve individual portions of things. It's also where like the packs of gum are and things. So if someone's looking for something just to grab and go, it's so much easier to find the snack there than all the different shelves push to the back and it makes it really, really easy. So you might wanna grab and go section too. Heidi said, I wipe down bottles and wash a different shelf in the fridge every few weeks. So it's not an overwhelming task. Heidi, I love this. So what she's done is taken the big project of cleaning the refrigerator. And she says, this week I'm gonna do top left, you know, top right, middle left, middle right. And every you know, week or so it's a new shelf, but in rotation, it keeps everything tidy. And I think that's great. And we can kind of take that thought and apply it across the board to any large task and you're just doing a little bit of it. Um, Edith says, I always wipe and wash the refrigerator before I put new food in it. I think that's wonderful. So maybe you're making your shopping list, um, seeing what you need and then coming back and everything's fresh. Robin said those over the door shoe organizers are great for separate snacks too. 
Genius, Robin, I love it. So you may know that over the door shoe organizer with clear pockets meant for shoes, don't put shoes in it, but we can put our snacks or little packets or little spice mixes, hot cocoa packets and things in the pantry. But that over the door shoe organizer, you can probably use that in any room of your house just for extra storage in the closet for accessories and belts and scarves and statement necklaces in the entryway for the dog leash and sunglasses and all your keys and things like that. So many different ways to use that in the garage, even for the light bulbs and the, you know, oil for the lawnmower and snowblower office, craft area, children's rooms. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Um, over the door shoe organizers are great for so many things. Great tip. Thank you, Robin. So we're halfway through. Six was pantry. Seven takes us to the patio area, if you have one. So we're looking at patio furniture, wiping down the outdoor table. If you have a bench, if you have gardening supplies, so something outdoors that might come to mind. And thinking outdoors, does anyone have a box of things that they were planning to sell at a yard sale, yet you have no plan to have a yard sale? And this happens so easily. I do it myself. I'm like, well, I'm not going to keep it. I could donate it, but you know, maybe I could just sell it. And then I put it in a to be sold box and then I never sell it. I'm never going to have a yard sale. I don't know who I think I'm kidding. So if you have a box of things that you've been thinking to sell, you might consider just listing them for sale online. And one of the easiest places I think to do this is Mercari, M-E-R-C-A-R-I, Mercari, M-E-R-C-A-R-I, Mercari. So www.mercari.com. It is just like an online um, site for selling things. The buyer pays the shipping. I think they take about 15% of the sale. Don't quote me, but I think it's 12 to 15, I believe. So you could list an item. You're basically just taking a photo of it, listing it for sale, and hopefully you get a buyer. And so this would be really easy if you wanted to list some things or um, someone else in the family that's really, you know, tech savvy, and maybe, you know, they're going to get a little profit from anything that sells, you might be able to, you know, bring them in on the project. So if you have a box of things in the garage to sell or patio furniture or something relating to gardening, that's number seven on our list. And I'll invite you to add that to your list now. Number eight is pretty surprising because as we're talking about cleaning and spring cleaning, we might forget to clean the cleaning supplies. So number eight is clean the cleaning supplies. And this is just um, such a great little thing to do. It probably won't take long, but wiping down the vacuum, refreshing the filter, even your broom, right? Wiping down the handle, being sure that your um, bristles are all in good condition. If anything wrapped around that, you know, um, little brush roller in the front of the vacuum, clipping that off. Um, just a little refresh on the cleaning supplies because clean cleaning supplies are gonna help you clean a lot faster and more effectively. Um, not so clean cleaning supplies are probably gonna add to the effort. So clean the cleaning supplies and that's number eight on our list. If anything needs to be replaced, this would be the time to do it. And we have nine, 10 and 11 and 12 coming at you. And number nine is hazardous waste. So if you have things that you know don't belong in the landfill and you're not quite sure what to do with them, um, I do have a few ideas for you. If it is um, electronics, so if it's hazardous waste when it comes to electronics, we're talking about printers and computers and tablets and things. Best Buy and Staples are collection points for recycling electronics at no charge. So Staples or Best Buy are collection points for recycling electronics at no charge. So you could start there with electronics. Of course, if you're in the area of the library, then there is a um, hazardous waste and there's collection points. I'll put the link in the chat for where you can see the um, website page and it's all the things that they accept and the two different places they accept it and the days and times that they're open. So this would be great for dropping off hazardous waste if you had things like pesticides, gardening things that you know um, aren't just things to be thrown away. So that would be hazardous waste. And again, deadlines, putting it on your calendar, what day can I go, fill up the car and out those things are going to go. So that's a great first step when it comes to all of the recycling. And so if that's something that's on your list, we can make a note of those dates and make that happen. And that's going to free up space 
hopefully um, in your garage or wherever those items are. If you have electronics and you would like to um, maybe sell the electronics or anyone have CDs, CDs on their bookcase or even books, um, you can sell them at Declutter, D-E-C-L-U-T-T-R, Declutter, D-E-C-L-U-T-T-R. There's no E before the R, Declutter. When you get there, type in what you have. If they want to buy it, they'll tell you how much they'll give you and they'll give you a postage paid label to get it there. So super simple and a nice way to maybe put a few dollars back in your pocket. So that's our hazardous waste. That's number nine. I'm gonna give you number 10, totally unexpected. And this is clean the toothbrush holder. Clean the toothbrush holder. So many times we'll clean or even replace our toothbrush, but how many times are we cleaning the holder where maybe water and extra toothpaste drips down into the holder. So that's number 10, and we've got some love for that one. That is a big one and often overlooked. Number 11 is the bath mat. And so if it's been some time since you refreshed the bath mat or if it's a slip and fall hazard because it's lost its backing, then please replace your bath mat. Um, I recently replaced my kitchen runner rug because I was sliding all over the kitchen. The backing had just disintegrated after, I mean, almost 15 years. I can't imagine how it happened. Did it, I thought I was gonna get 16 years out of my bath mat, of my kitchen mat, but I didn't. So uh, 11 is our bath mat and let's go ahead and refresh it or replace it. And I should say, maybe we'll just do mats in general when it comes to number 11, because also the welcome mat comes to mind. And you know, the welcome mat is not only meant to welcome anyone that's coming and welcome you home, but it's also really meant to just absorb anything before it tracks into the house. So if it's not working because it's not, if it doesn't have the little grooves to get into the um, ridges of your shoes, so it's not removing any debris and mud and things, um, maybe a welcome mat refresh is, uh, is in order. So thinking about that when it comes to number 11, and that's our mat. And now we've got number 12. And number 12 is the one where I'm gonna invite you to do a little tidy up with me. So we're gonna take a moment, we're gonna do a little three minute tidy up. If you joined us for um, you know, some of our last programs, you know how much I love setting a timer. I think it gives us a, a start time, it gives us an end time, and it helps us turn a boring chore into a challenge. Um, so we're gonna do a little tidy up. Um, when we come back, we'll answer Amy's question and mention Peg's comment in the chat. So stay tuned for that. Then we'll circle back to our to-do list and ensure that we have all the strategies to get our to-do list done. So we have three minutes on our timer. Number 12 on our list is the bathroom vanity drawer. The bathroom vanity drawer, often overlooked, but this is where you may find a makeup brush and the bristles are starting to come out. Um, if you don't have a vanity drawer or your vanity drawer doesn't need as much attention, you might look at your medicine cabinet for outdated prescriptions, medication, tweezers that don't tweeze, clippers that don't clip, um, hair dryer that doesn't work, rusty razors, um, nail polish that's seven years old, makeup that's long, longer than maybe one year old, um, old lotions, hand lotions, you don't like the scent. I don't know what it is, but we're gonna go ahead and take three minutes and see if you can find three things to either maybe donate from the bathroom, but more often than not, they're things that have expired, like um, first aid supplies or band-aids that are no longer sanitary because the paper ripped. So we're looking for three things in three minutes. It's a little challenge that I'm issuing. If you'd like to join us, please do. If you'd prefer not to, sit back and you don't have to, or you could delete emails or pictures from your phone while we're waiting. So um, Edith, we're gonna come back to some expiration dates in just a moment. I think we're all excited to get started. Let's see what we can find. We're gonna begin in three, two, one, let's go. Our timer's ticking and you're invited to do a little tidy up with me. We're heading to the bathroom vanity drawer or medicine cabinet. We're looking for three things that can get out of that bathroom. Two minutes and 45 seconds left as our timer ticks down. And here we go. Keep working and I'll be here to answer your questions and we will be tidying up together. So excited for everyone, maybe have a little success before we uh, 
move on. So this is just a little something. All right, as our timer ticks down, let's take a look. Two minutes and 15 seconds left. 2.15 on the timer and you are continuing to tidy up. Here we go. Can't wait to see what everyone finds. Maybe we should have a prize for the oldest item found. That would be fun. All right, as our timer ticks away, then we'll come back. We have a few questions and comments to clarify. We'll get to all of your questions. And then we will continue on our spring cleaning checklist. One minute and 45 seconds left. You're not even halfway through. You are not even halfway through. So just keep going. One minute and 35 seconds left on the timer. 135. As our timer ticks down, you are now officially halfway through. So just keep going. And uh, yes, Christine, I'll do a little uh, recap. So stay tuned for that. Uh, in case anyone missed, uh, we'll absolutely do a recap. So uh, stay tuned. And we have one minute and 15 seconds for those of you that are off and finding three or more things to discard from the bathroom. That vanity drawer, the medicine cabinet, maybe even under the sink. You're very welcome. It's our final one minute. It's our final minute, everyone. So keep going. Timer's ticking and you are getting things done. I know it. This is so great. So if you're able to join us for this little jump start, um, you'll probably see some progress in the three minutes. If this isn't something you're able to join us for, no worries. My hope is that you'll find three minutes sometime this evening before you go to bed and really just give it a try. And it's not long enough to do a whole makeover, but it's long enough to do a little something. And if getting started is difficult, it's a great place to begin. Um, not too sentimentally attached to all the things in the bathroom that are no longer working well. 20 seconds left on our timer. We have 20 seconds left on our timer as our timer ticks away. And we're down to 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and we're done. You're gonna hear that timer ring. So come on back and tell us in the chat if you'd like to tell us what you found. We'd love to hear all about it. Um, something unexpected, something that you don't remember owning, something really old. Um, it's always fun to see what everyone finds. So if you'd like to share with us in the chat how that went, that was just three minutes. So imagine if you did three minutes a day in a particular area, what would change? And my guess is a lot would change a lot faster than you might be anticipating. If you did find medication, CVS and Walgreens pharmacies will often take back um, pills. The Kaiser Pharmacy in Burke, Virginia will take back pills and also um, lancets and syringes and liquids and spectrum um, it, it is in the Fair Lakes in Fairfax, um, Spectrum Health Center. It's um, 4375 Fair Lakes Court in Fairfax. They will also take liquids and syringes and things. So as you're paring down uh, that area, I'm so excited to see what everyone has found. Let's um, just do a quick little uh, look back in chat because Amy asked um, Mercari versus Declutter. So Declutter um, and she spelled it correctly, D-E-C-L-U-T-T-R. -T Declutter takes, they'll buy Legos, electronics, CDs, and books. They will tell you how much they'll give you. They'll send you a postage paid label and you're done. So that is just an automatic sale. They're telling you they want it and they'll, how much they'll pay you. Versus Macari, and thank you for clarifying, Amy. Macari is where you're listing it for sale and hoping for a buyer. The buyer pays the shipping, but you have to wait for a buyer. So um, that's a little bit different, but um, hopefully the buyer will come. So Macari, and Macari can be anything, um, children's things, um, household things, books, CDs, records, figurines, collectibles. It can be anything at all. So that's um, your difference. And I hope that that's uh, helpful for you. Uh, Peg, remind us that books can go to Second and Charles. Um, they sell the used books and also the drug take back days in April and October. Those are also great um, reminders. Um, Christine, we are gonna do that recap in just a moment. Edith asked about nail polish and when does it expire? 
So typically nail polish, whenever it changes color or consistency would be a good clue. Um, overall, it's a two year, um, 18 to 24 month expiration date on nail polish. So there, it is important just to stay focused on, you know, a lot of the products in the bathroom you're using directly on your body, some very close to your eyes and your face, and you just want to be sure everything's really in date. So items do have an expiration date. Sometimes it's really hard to find it. It might be in the crimp or um, what you may be noticing is on some products, there's a little clamshell uh, right here. How can I do this for you? I'll point to it with a pen. So there's like a little clamshell picture right here. Very challenging sometimes to see, but it looks like a little clamshell. And inside it says 2-4-M and that lets you know 24 months. So this is a lotion, hand lotion, 24 months. Typically mascara is three months. That's right up against your lash line. Liquid eyeliner, also three months. As a very general broad roll, uh, rule, most things are about a year. Um, so if it's, you know, like a powder foundation, a blush, an eyeshadow powder, um, closer to a year. But, you know, if you've got things that you remember having back in high school or um, things like that, that would probably be a telltale sign. It might be time to let them go. We've got a great cosmetics chart that uh, Karen put up. Thank you so much. Um, check cosmetic.net. So we love all these resources. Thank you for sharing. And um, Heidi remind us that she got a whole shelf back in three minutes. Woohoo! She's got an oral mouth wrench from 2017. She might win the prize for oldest item um, and all sorts of things that are going out. So a whole shelf in three minutes. How exciting. We love it. Um, well done. So just to clarify, it typically is the expiration date. Absolutely. The clock starts ticking once you open it. But for a lot of products, the expiration date can actually be sooner than that because um, they do degrade over time. Like a sunscreen is generally six months um, once it's open to air or the product gets warm. And it's just that the active ingredient um, isn't uh, going to deliver on its promise. So you're not getting that same level of protection that you might have um, expected. So keep a marker nearby. And when you bring food or makeup in, mark when's the expiration date or when did I buy it so you can calculate the expiration date because it can be really difficult to remember. You think you just bought it, but not so much. So love it. Um, Amy is cheering. Heidi on. Heidi is such an inspiration. Little by little by little. We're going to do a quick recap of the 12 tasks that I invited you to add to your list. Then we're going to wrap up with how we can stay motivated and answer any of your questions. So number one was dusting all the little cracks and crevices that we often forget, the edges of the door frame and all of that. And then we talked about dusting the ceiling fans, number two, and the dryer vent, number three. Number four was those high touch surfaces, including the salt and pepper shaker. So that's a big one. And that's followed by number five, and that is our refrigerator. Number six was our pantry, straightening it up, making sure we're filling from the back so we use the oldest first. And number seven takes us outdoors to the patio or anything that's in a box that you're thinking to sell for a yard sale. We considered Mercari where we could list our items for sale or declutter where we can just sell back our items on the spot. Number eight is cleaning our cleaning supplies. Number nine is hazardous waste. And I shared with you, for those of you in the area of the library, there's a link in the chat to find the information and that Best Buy and Staples stores take back electronics for free for recycling. Number 10 is cleaning that toothbrush holder. Number 11 is mats, our bath mat and our welcome mat. And number 12, we did it together, the vanity drawer or medicine cabinet. So how do we get these things done if we're not really feeling particularly motivated to make it happen? And I think a deadline is a great way to go. Into the chat, for those of you in the area of the library, are all the upcoming paper shredding dates that are happening. You can bring in four boxes and get there early because when the truck is full, it's driving away. So here are dates. And what is a date? It's a deadline, the deadline to make it happen. So for example, if you knew you wanted to go to the first one on April 30th, then what's going to happen is you have from now till April 30th to get your four boxes of paper ready to go. There's your deadline. If you don't have a deadline, you can create a deadline by scheduling an organization to come and pick up. And once you have the pickup date, 
you also have, you guessed it, a deadline. And the deadline is going to basically force us to take a bag and fill it so that we can go ahead and share it. We talked about selling things on Macari, but of course, as we're doing our spring cleaning and our spring decluttering, if you're changing out your seasonal wardrobe from winter to spring, and you find some things that you'd like to sell, shoes, clothes, handbags, accessories, men's suits, children's things, whatever you may have, you can try listing them on Poshmark, P-O-S-H-M-A-R-K, Poshmark, P-O-S-H-M-A-R-K, Poshmark, P is in Peter, Poshmark. You take a picture, one picture, list the item and wait for a buyer. The buyer pays the shipping and off your item goes. And it can be a fairly easy way. Listen, you learn Zoom, Poshmark's probably even easier than that. List your item and see if instead of spending all weekend having a yard sale or planning to have a yard sale and never having a yard sale, you'll actually be able to get this done. So Poshmark can be a great resource. So at the very beginning of our time together, almost an hour ago at this point, where does the time go? When we're with good friends, the time just evaporates. And so we started by doing that little download, capturing a list of things that have been on our mind that we want to get done. Then I invited you to start plugging them into your calendar, maybe three per day to start getting those things done. Little bits of them if they're a bigger project. With that in mind, I'll invite you now to be sure that you have fun things on your calendar to look forward to. There's a lot going on in the world. There's so many things to be concerned about. We've got a lot happening and everyone feels like they're behind. We just lost an hour and no one can believe it's already the 15th of March. So if you're feeling like that, welcome. I think everyone does these days and you're in good company in that regard. And having something fun to look forward to can be a wonderful way of recharging your battery because if you're just always doing stuff, you're putting the energy out. But if you never get the energy back, it's really hard to keep going. So thinking about something to look forward to, it may be taking a walk with your dog or doing some gardening or a day trip, something that's really going to recharge your battery. And I would invite you to think about at least one thing to look forward to a month at a minimum. If you had one thing to look forward to a week, I think that's even better. And if you get really good at this, you may have one thing to look forward to each day. So when we can add things that we're looking forward to, and whatever that is, right? So each and every one of us is probably recharged by something different. It might be an art class. It might be a date night. It might be a girl's night. It might be a girl's Zoom where you just get together on video. Whatever that looks like could be your favorite movie. Whatever that is, I'd invite you to put it on your list. And not just so that it's going to happen, but so that it's on your to-do list. So you don't feel guilty about doing something that feels like it's just an extra thing. It's actually on your to-do list so you can cross it off. So let's make sure that we have those fun things. We have three things a day. We've got our deadline to ensure that things happen. And I'm so excited for everyone to just keep ticking things off. And a really big reminder as we wrap up our time together, your to-do list is never done. Life comes with a lot of practical things we have to do, chores and all of that. And it's just gonna keep coming. You do the laundry, there's more laundry to do. So it's more of a routine that it is a to-do list and if that helps you keep your momentum going, then there we go. So I see all of your lovely comments coming in in the chat. Thank you so much. Peg is transferring her items. Heidi's ready to go. Our choice says she's inspired. Joanne is thanking us for the presentation. Rabinder, as ever, it is such a pleasure to join you, the Fairfax County Library, for making our program possible. It's been such a delight to spend time with you. Some of you may need to log off and go get started before the momentum leaves you, in which case uh, we're staying so long. If you're able to stick around, we'll open up for a q and I'm reading each and every comment here. Thank you so very much for your kind words. It's been my pleasure to present yet again for you through the wonderful Fairfax County Library. And I do hope this isn't the last time we'll meet. So you can follow me on social media, head to jamienovak.com. I'll put that information in the chat if you'd like to follow me. There's a podcast, there's a YouTube show, and there's programs almost every um, evening or afternoon. So I would invite you to join me again. Um, I am Jamie L. Novak on Instagram and just about everywhere else, I am Jamie Novak. So there you go, Heidi, we're all gonna be friends. We'll stay in touch and I look forward to seeing you for a program soon. Um, just to give you a sense of what's coming up in case 
maybe someone missed this program or you were so inspired by this program you want to continue on. Tomorrow is Wednesday and at uh, four o'clock I'm teaching one notebook spring decluttering followed by seven o'clock declutter 101 what to donate sell recycle and shred today and they're available to you um, through the libraries that they're presenting and uh, what a delight it was to uh, to see you so please visit jamienovak.com I'm so glad all the comments are saying how much you sort of took away and all those little helpful nuggets and the inspiration and that was absolutely um, what I hope to deliver and uh, thank you for letting me know that uh, you're, you've got some great takeaways. So let's go get those to-do lists done. I'm excited for everyone. Please do share your next success with me. That's my favorite part that I get to know what happens after our program. And maybe I'll see you online tomorrow at four or seven, uh, two brand new programs. So Ravinder, always a delight. You always make it so easy. And thank you so very much for having me uh, return to the library. I look forward to the next time.